Hopefully you're not picking up any fan noise from the monster of a computer that is sitting behind me. I think my lab will not pick that up. At any rate, I got a monster of a computer behind me. This is a ThinkStation P920 from Lenovo. It has two Quadro RTX 8000 GPUs on it that are right now cranking full bore training a GAN neural network from scratch that I'm going to be using in one of my next videos. I have this computer for about a month and a half, so I'm going to make use of it in the next couple of videos and show how to really do some things that you would want for heavy crunching power on your local computer. And also look at what it really is like to have two GPUs on a local computer and how to work with those. Now this computer is pretty heavy duty. It comes with 192 gigabytes of RAM, two Intel Xenon Gold Edition CPUs that have combined together 48 complete threads, 24 cores with you know hyper-threading type technology. You can configure these machines to have much, much more than that in terms of RAM. You can go all the way up to two terabytes if you're willing to put the right CPUs into there to, to give it full access. These machines are not cheap though. This is a $20,000 US dollars machine. So let's take a look at it. I'll take you through the unboxing. We'll take it apart, see what's inside, and then go right into running some GANs on it and training it full bore, seeing what it is completely capable of. We'll continue using it in the next couple of videos as well. Okay, let's unbox this big solid computer. Once I have it out of the box, then I'm gonna actually open the computer and see what's inside. First thing is just how do you open it? Well, you can take this computer almost completely apart without ever even using one of these. No screwdrivers really needed. Push the little button here, pop this guy out, and just like magic, your case is open. And I really, really like this. This is basically a little map of the inside of this computer. You're able to see all of the, the two CPUs, where the, the, the GPUs might sit, and just what is really everything. It gives you a guided map to this. Some motherboards will give you this, some won't. I wish the motherboard manufacturer that I used my own computer would have given me that. Also, once you have this open, there's all these red connector points. And those show you where the various components are that you can that you can open. The first thing that you'll want to remove once you have this open. Oh, and by the way, stick around until the end of the video if you want to see me put this thing back on. I did have a little more trouble putting it back on than actually taking it off. But once you know how to do it, it's it's really quite quite easy. This part here is essentially controlling airflow. So we can pull that off and it comes off quite easily. Now, this is another one of those pieces that you wanna remember, it's hinged right there. So you want to put it back into the hinge and snap it in, otherwise you're not gonna close the case. But you pull that off and this is essentially airflow director. This is really neat. I mean, this is custom made for this computer and this these are two Xenon Gold CPUs from Intel. The exact specs are shown here. See, the fans are pushing the air this direction. That device I just removed guides it, and it goes out the fan to the back. That really helps with the airflow for this machine and allows those CPUs to really stay cool. Now, the two GPUs are right there. So let me go ahead and open my computer and we're going to compare these two really side by side and just see what the insides of the cases look like. Now let's look at the individual components of this computer and get an idea of what is all here. 
So I've got two RTX 8000 cards. These are Quadro cards, which really have a lot of memory compared to the gamer sort of video cards from NVIDIA. So you, if you look at the RTX 8000 card, just one of them has 4600 CUDA parallel processing cores, 576 tensor cores. But here's where it's really amazing. 48 gigabytes of RAM on each of those two. Now you can put an NVLink there. The model that Lenovo provided me with doesn't have the NVLink on there. So it'll be interesting to see what effects that has on some of the times that I get as I run this computer on some heavy duty compute tasks. It's not the end of the world not having that link on the card basically that's used to rapidly move memory between the two GPUs. And you have to specifically program for that in the CUDA architecture. And TensorFlow, which I primarily work with, does have some capabilities for that. This is where you just will not see that sort of memory on the more gaming oriented machines. The Titan RTX that I work with on my computer, it has 24 gigabytes of RAM available for a GPU, which is also very large compared to what you typically see on a gamer computer. Now, another difference with, with gaming is these are both air-cooled. These are Xenon Gold 6226 CPUs with a total of 48 cores for both of them running at 2.7 gigahertz. So each of these two CPUs also has their own memory associated with them. You can see this, this cards up and down above each of these. There's a total of six channels available on this computer. That has to do with parallel access of memory if you're not as familiar with that. You'll also notice if you look at it, if you can see at the bottom here, I only have three in each of these banks. The bottom SIM, which has a black connector as opposed to the white connectors, that's a special slot because of your six channels it will be shared. That is how you take this computer from 1.5 terabytes of RAM to two terabytes of RAM. If you want to go all the way and use those additional slots, then you need to use one of the Xenons that has an M behind it in its name. And those are considerably more expensive. So if I wanted to take this computer fully out to two terabytes, I would have to replace the two CPUs that are currently provided with it. Now, as far as the Xenon chips, they are typically used in the server room and they're meant to optimize temperature across a large number of them. This computer, since it has Xenon on it, that means what you're writing should be very compatible with the server room. Usually you're not going to have a instruction set issue between the more consumer oriented i7, i10 sort of CPUs. However, this just keeps you very in line with what you have in, in the server room. Now this computer, the way that they have this configured for the, the computer that Lenovo sent to me for testing, because by the way, I'm not keeping this, it's going back to Lenovo when I'm done experimenting with it. I get it for about a month. It has a total of 192 gigabytes of RAM. So each of these SIM cards that you see in there is essentially 32 gigabytes of, of RAM in there. So you can see on the SIM cards that I have three, six, nine, 12, a total of 12 of those. Each of those SIM cards equipped with the way that the computer was sent to me. So if you look at this in the performance monitor on Linux, you can, you can see. And by the way, this computer came with Ubuntu pre-installed. Really, on this class of a computer, I mean, Windows is great, but it's just not compatible with everything that I need it, that I need to do on this level of a computer. I will still use something like a Windows or a Mac as my day-to-day -day office automation sort of computer. I mean, you can go hardcore all the way Linux, and certainly I am in favor of using even the IDEs. VS Code actually is what I use when I'm typically in this sort of environment. But you can load the Docker images. I use NVIDIA Docker and I go directly to accessing these 
these GPUs. All these red bars are places that you can open it. I could literally pop this one out and take the power supply out. This is a considerably powerful power supply. It's over a thousand watts. You can also put a third NVIDIA card up here if you, if you want to have three of them. That's the most you can put on this particular computer. And though this one is not equipped with NVLink, you wouldn't be able to link that, that third one up there into it. This one also has a terabyte M2 hard drive. You can pop that right out up here and add additional ones really pretty easily. You can easily put RAID arrays into this computer because it's just got so many different spots that you can really put additional drives. It's very, very expandable and very easily expandable using all of these access points that they have available. All right, that was fun. Let's go ahead and put this back together and see what it can do. Okay, it's booted up. We are in the Ubuntu operating system that Lenovo sends with these computers. This works great for the ThinkStation because most of what I want to run on this, it's best just to run it in native Linux anyway to get the maximum performance for those two RTX 8000s that are built into the system. So the first thing that I'm going to do is install the NVIDIA data science stack that they already put the files preloaded on here. Now, if you're interested in seeing how to set all this stuff up, and it's not too bad, most of this is already pre-installed for you, the drivers and other things. I do have other videos where I talk about installing everything and getting going on a Lenovo ThinkPad P53. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and get this computer training some serious GANs so that I can give you some videos and show you where I've gotten and how to get NVIDIA Docker and some other things up and running on this computer to make use of these technologies. All right, did you stick around all the way to the end to see this? This is how to put this thing back together. It's not hard if you know what you're doing, and initially I did not. The first thing to do to put this thing back together is the airflow thing. Don't just put it right in, otherwise it's, it's gonna, it needs to, it's a hinge, and it needs to connect over there, and then you can pop it right back in, and everything is flush. You wanna make sure that is flush or this guy is not going to connect. Now, to do this, first of all, don't try to put it on upside down like that. That will not work. You don't need this little thing popped out. That was one thing that I initially toyed with. And then you just want to align it pretty close to their eye, uh, yeah. So there's a little crease right here that you feel like it's all nice and snug and then you push it forward and then let this thing out and grab it back in and it's back. Yeah, that took me 10 minutes the first time. Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe to my channel if you want to watch how I make use of this awesome computer for about a month and a half. And all things AI and deep learning I cover on this channel. Thanks, and consider giving this video a like.